Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to your 23rd tutorial in the Intermediate Algebra series. Um, in this tutorial, I've uh, chosen this variable expression to evaluate, and these are the values that I'm going to assign to A, B, and C. So this is going to be a little bit more challenging than the last two um, variable expressions that I've evaluated. And uh, because of that, there's going to be some pretty good math that's going to come out of here that I get to show you guys, so I'm excited about that. So let's go ahead and get started here. So this first term is 4 times a over b. So 4 times a, a is a negative 3, and then that's over b. b is equal to 4. And then we're going to add that to c. c is equal to 2. And then we're going to add that to 7 over 4 times the quantity of b squared minus c. So b is 4, so that means that b squared is 4 squared minus c, c is equal to 2. So now we're looking at this and we see that we've got some addition, we've got some multiplication here, we've got parentheses and an exponent, subtraction. Of all of these operations that we could perform, the one that is uh, the most important that we do first is the parentheses. Everything inside of here has to be done first because of order of operations. So inside the parentheses we have an exponent and we have subtraction. So of those two, we do the exponent first. So 4 squared is equal to 4 times 4, which is 16. So this last term becomes 7 over 4 times 16 minus 2. And the first two terms stay the same, so I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite those. So now we finish what we started in the grouping mechanism here. So 16 minus 2 is 14. So this last term becomes 7 over 4 times 14. And then that is added to 2, which is added to 4 times negative 3 over 4. So the next thing I want to point out is this right here. We have 7 over 4 times 14. We can rewrite this as 7 times 14 over 4. So we can basically take this number out here and bring it into the numerator of our fraction. So why can we do that? Well the reason why is because 14 is really the same thing as 14 over 1. So since this is equal to 14, then we wrote 14 as a fraction. So this is 7 over 4 times 14. We'll just rewrite that down here. And now we have a multiplication of two fractions. 7 times 14 for our purposes is simply 7 times 14 and 4 times 1 is equal to 4. So this is why we can take this number and move it into the numerator here. So now that we know that, let's just go ahead and rewrite that right here. 7 times 14 over 4. And here, just to give myself a little bit more room, I'm going to write it a little bit lower here. 7 over 4, sorry, 7 times 14 over 4. And then we're going to add that to the 2, but let's not write the 2 just yet. And we're going to rewrite this first term, 4 times negative 3 over 4. So the reason why I didn't write the 2 is because these other two terms have the same common denominator of 4 here. And it would be really nice if we could make this middle term also have the common denominator of 4. That way we can simply add the numerators together. So in order to make this some number over 4 without changing its value, we simply realize that 2 is equal to 2 over 1. And if we multiply that by a 1, then we can choose 4 over 4 as our 1, because 2 times 1 is equal to 2. 4 over 4 equals 1. So this is simply 2 times 1 equals 2, which means that the value of this multiplication of fractions is going to be equal to the value of 2. So 2 times 4 is 8, and 1 times 4 is 4. So 2 is really the same thing as 8 over 4. So we're going to write 8 over 4 here. And now we have three terms all over the same common denominator of 4. So we're going to simply rewrite that here. And we're going to add the numerators together. And so the first numerator is 4 times a negative 3 and we're adding that to 8, and then we're adding that to 7 times 14. 
and that's all over the same common denominator of 4. So going left to right now, we evaluate 4 times a negative 3. 4 times a positive 3 is 12, which means that 4 times a negative 3 is negative 12. And then we're adding that to 8, and adding that to 7 times 14. So if you don't know, you can go ahead and just work it out by hand here. 14 times 7, and 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 1 is 7. Add the 2, gives you a 9. So that means this last term is 98. And these are all over the same common denominator of 4. So now we have a negative 12 plus 8. And so if we were to look at this on a number line, and we could say that this right here is the value negative 12, and we want to add 8 to it, we simply count up 8 spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units in the positive direction. So what we do is we start with negative 12, and we count negative 11, negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4. So because this value is negative 4 and we had to move 8 units in the positive direction, that means that negative 12 plus 8 is equal to negative 4. So on top here, the first two ter terms change to negative 4, and then the last term is 98, and that's divided by the same common denominator of 4. So now we have 98 and a negative 4. By the commutative property of addition, we can simply change the order of these top two terms so that we have 98 minus 4 over 4. And so 98 minus 4 is simply going to be 94 over the common denominator of 4. And 94 is can be written as we can divide this by 2, and half of 94 is 47, and so 47 times 2 is equal to 94, so the top is the same here, and 4 is equal to 2 times 2, and 2 cancels with 2, giving us our answer of 47 over 2. So thanks for everyone for watching this tutorial. Stay tuned for um, some more tutorials in the Intermediate Algebra series. I'm going to be making a whole bunch more videos on Intermediate Algebra. So uh, yeah, I hope you, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and uh, stay tuned for more. You guys have an excellent day and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.